Good afternoon and welcome to Innovation Alley. I'm Tim O'Rourke, the Chief Technical Officer, and I'm with a great panel today in Gwinnett County, Georgia, at the Water Tower. Uh, we're going to talk about the wonderful things happening here at the Water Tower. Uh, we've spent most of the day touring the labs and talking to Chris, and now we've got a chance to talk to the CEO of the Water Tower, Melissa Meeker. Happy to have you. Well, before we get into your background and how we uh, arrived at, uh, or you have arrived at this vision and how this has evolved, let me introduce my co-host, Dave White. Go ahead, Dave, say something about yeah, yourself. Yeah, Dave White, excited to be here at the Water Tower. Um, you know, we're involved in the Office of Applied Technology at Wade Tram. We get really excited when we hear about initiatives like this going on and want to know how we can get involved and, and learn more about what you do. Chris, why don't you say something about yourself? Sure. Uh, hello, Chris Haney. I specialize in advanced treatment applications, and uh, with this facility being co-located at Gwinnett uh, County's flagship F. Wayne Hill Wastewater Water Resource Center, it's just a great uh, place to be for, uh, for all of us here looking to do more on the treatment side and emerging technology side, and no better place to be than at the Water Tower working with Melissa and her team. So thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Thank you and for having that, me. with that, Melissa, why don't you share... Your background, your, you got a half hour to talk while oh, we listen. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, Melissa Meeker, uh, I am the CEO of the Water Tower. I'm really glad that you guys are here. Yep. Um, 30 plus years experience in the industry. So I have done everything from uh, private consulting to um, grew, really grew up working for the state of Florida at the Department of Environmental Protection. Ran the South Florida Water Management District, just a little job. And... Um, went to DC, ran an association, and then a research foundation. And sort of um, after several months of begging, they dragged me down here to try and turn this into something physical. And here we are, five years later. So really five excited years. to be here, yeah. 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 I think we started talking about this, Chris, more, well, we moved in here about a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. About a year, yep. almost a year. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we started talking about it before that and the vision of being involved in facilities like this and <clears throat> the importance in our industry for us to participate in these kinds of things. And so I think this is a really cool place. And I hadn't seen it until today. Yeah. So I've gotten to see what you've grown out. And this thing's almost full, this first building. And I know you're planning growth. We'll yeah. talk about that as you want. But um, what led to this whole idea in your mind for this location? And Yeah, well, the, the awesome thing, um, and Chris mentioned this, um, just being in Gwinnett County itself is amazing. The county has uh, just years of um, being, you know, front and center on the innovation side. This facility, uh, the water resources facility, um, is uh, at one point was the largest and highest treated wastewater facility on the eastern seaboard, um, especially for the type of treatment, obviously, that they're doing. Um, and still lead the way in terms of innovation. So it's always, the, the county has always had a reputation for being very forward thinking and progressive getting out there. And progressive, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as you can imagine, when you're that progressive, people want to come to you and do research and do different projects with you. And finally, the utility said, look, we, we have a job to do. We need a place to do that. Yeah, yeah. so let's yeah. create a space yeah. where people can come and do that. Um, and that was really how the idea of the water tower happened. Wow, that's cool. It's, so for those that aren't aware, like what is the Water Tower? The Water Tower is a nonprofit uh, that is uh, focused in the water industry um, with a big focus on innovation, technology innovation, um, you know, big data. We're very data rich, but it's knowledge poor. So how do we, um, you know, bring a focus on that uh, and helping utilities solve the challenges that they're dealing with uh, and doing that by exposing them to utilities. You know, it's a very conservative industry. I don't have to tell you guys that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so adopting new technologies and getting involved in innovation is a, is a struggle for the industry. So in this space, it's a safe space, <clears throat> right? So we marry our demonstration of products, and I don't know if you got to see the control room, but marrying that demonstration of different technologies with our workforce training to expose new operators, existing operators, to the technology advances that are out there so that they feel more comfortable with that. So when right. they go back to their utility, they can say, you know, there's a smarter way to do this. Let me, 
let me go and figure out you know how to bring this technology to the utility. You're, you're right about this being a conservative industry oh, yeah. and we're trained as engineers on age-old principles and, yep. and guidance and you know what I'm the chief technical officer and we we have an office of applied technology at Wade Trim that we've been nurturing now for several years it's paid huge dividends for us is to try and get people to not think of how things have been done or they are even being done now it's how are they going to be done in five years, 10 years, 15 years. Get out of your paradigm of comfort. That's exactly and think right. Along. And it sounds like that's what this place is all about. Right? That's exactly right. So we're happy to be part of that and uh, grow from that. So Chris, I mean, you, you're the one that kind of convinced us all that this was a great idea. Yeah. Where do you see this all going? I bribed right? him, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, my passion from a technical standpoint has been heavy innovation and technology for about the past 15 years. Uh, primarily for wastewater treatment applications in biosolids and resource recovery. Um, there's not a better facility to be co-located with, right number door. one, yeah. uh, just yeah. stone throw away here. So that's, that's really exciting for me uh, from a professional development standpoint and, and from a recruiting standpoint and development of technical capabilities. Um, it's just the, the benefits here are just unlimited. Uh, so getting to know Melissa better, and understanding her vision and the overall vision uh, that the county had for this entire operation was something that just really resonated with me. And so coming on board to Wade Trim um, and talking with you guys yep. and, and other leaders, it was, it was really an easy sell for us. And I really appreciate how the firm has supported us here. Um, uh, uh, you know, from things like, you know, taking space here that we're sitting in here today. This is Wade Trim's uh, office here at the, wa wa the water tower, uh, all the way to, um, being the first sustaining partner, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, so we're really just getting getting it going here, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just in year one, and uh, you know, I'm I'm really uh, fortunate and excited to be part of your five year research advisory committee yep. uh, for the Lake Lanier watershed. So, you know, there's a lot of avenues here that we can take, and a lot of possibilities. Too. Inc and that is, that is a really nice office. <laughs> Yeah, yeah he's got one of the nice nicest, offices in, in the, the whole water building. It's, got, it's, <laughs> it's not just an office space. Like we yeah. did a tour before yeah. we sat down today. I mean, there were a lot of different facilities. It's, it's a think tank. It's campus, a thought leadership. Right? Yeah, module. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think when you when you think about the key areas that we're focused in, it's that applied research, which you spent time with Chris, <clears throat> so you saw the lab, oh, yeah. and you, yeah. you know, the days of academics just sitting at the university doing research that doesn't really impact a utility. I think are behind us. They're looking for ways to a get bridge out and to engage. get to the, exactly. to the utilities. And so we've gotten a great response from universities. We've been, um, you know, co-writing grants and all kinds of things, and they're starting to win and come in, which is amazing. Um, you've got that R and D demonstration space again, bringing water quality flows from the plant next door to our space in the back. We're waiting on our first trailer, which should show up in the next month, and I can talk about that. Sure. Um, it's that again, applied research, um, a base basically water treatment plant um, where we can demonstrate any technology in that system by plugging it into a to a pilot scale system which is exciting for I mean and what I, was, I mentioned this to Chris as well that being part of a nonprofit yeah. partnership we don't have we can't be accused of it being purely a profit driven incentive right exactly and we're driving for this technology through this vendor because you know two plus two equals a profit. Yeah. For both entities. This is truly objective thought leadership, right? Exactly, exactly. So you've got these four pillars that we've yeah. got in this thing around. I know you're blocking the bottom two for me, but I memorized them. Okay. Right? So <laughs> do you want to kind of cover these pillars? And you, I asked you if you had a strategic plan before the five year cycle started to help, and you said, no, it was, it was up here. It was. Uh, so here's you know, your, yeah, your, your pillars here. Why don't you tell out. our audience kind of what, what the drivers of each were and how you see it? Yeah, so I started to talk about the applied research, you know, mm -hmm. give them real world conditions where those live flows, they're not going to get in a, in a university lab or even in a, in a, a widget lab, a widget right. lab, you know, R&D lab. Um, so give them the space to do applied research and R&D, um, give them the space to, to demonstrate their technologies. You know, last Friday was demo day, it was our second one, and it was amazing, you know, 300 people in the building. Uh, looking at all kinds of innovative technologies. So that sort of hits the second tier of demonstrations and visualization. 
as well as stakeholder engagement, which to me is creating the space where we can talk about the challenges and figure out what needs to be done to address them. So who do you see as your, the stakeholders that you're talking about? Uh, the, industry. the industry. The industry in general? Um, yeah. And then tomorrow's okay. workforce. Right? Tomorrow's workforce. Right. So for us, that has been a big focus on um, our high school students. Uh, we do a lot of outreach and STEM education, ninth grade through 12. Again, trying to convince them that, one, there are water careers because they haven't heard about those. Um, and then we have a couple uh, senior programs where we'll bring a student in for their senior year. Yep. Um, they'll be here half time during the week. And by the end, they've gotten their Georgia required three months of hands-on experience yep. and have learned how to run the plant and the facility, not just sat for a 40-hour exam or 40-hour t- uh, class. We in high school, I worked at a pizza place, so yeah. I could have worked at the water tower. You could have worked at the water wow. tower. Wow, that's amazing. And then upon graduation, sit for your certification exam, and because you've got that hands-on experience, be making $50,000 a year mm. without going to college. So great gap year opportunity. I keep telling the story, you know, if you start to work at a utility straight out of high school, they'll pay for you to go to college. You can get your degree. You can yeah. get your yeah. degree on their dime. Yeah. So... Um, just a, a fantastic opportunity. I think that's really cool. And, and I, I talked to you before we started recording here that what I hear from a lot of utilities that I work with, they're concerned about succession. Absolutely. That there was this period of time where that just wasn't the cool job for uh, the high school kids to get Trying involved. Trying to make in. water so you, sexy. You're going right to, there you yeah. go, try to make water sexy. Yeah. You're going right to the source when they're young and, and, and can be you know convinced of something interesting, right? And then to build on that point, the other thing we do is go after technologies that are good for um, transfer of information. Yep. So, you know, a lot of uh, the new systems allow a senior person to say, this pump always does this and kick it and that will fix it. You know, this kind of thing that we can pass on that knowledge as people begin to retire is, that is institutional very knowledge exactly. that just happened with years of experience. That was probably a bad example, but yeah. you know what I mean. No, it's no, it's a great example. <laughs> Are you seeing in this little window of time from not the we're talking three or four years into your five year vision? Are you seeing an increase in interest just from year one to two to three? To, oh yeah, absolutely. You're seeing an increase, which is absolutely, and that's repeatable across the country, right? I'm talking about franchising. Yeah. I mean, and that's kind of your next vision is your, your thought leadership local. <laughs> um, but ultimately, you guys have the vision of being an international beacon for... Yes. So, um, you know, you talk about new technologies. I spent um, a week in Amsterdam last month. How was that? Um, it, was, it was great. Uh, we traveled the entire country. Wow. I actually went with the local uh, chamber of commerce and a couple of representatives from the county. And we have 25 companies that we're going to start to bring in. Really? Leading up to WefTech. So if we can set up one-on-one meetings, bring their technologies to bear, see which ones bite, then when we all go to WefTech, we can sit down and talk to them and hopefully eventually move them onto the campus. And building Best two case, and three. building two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, second tier would be just demoing, which is still phenomenal. Right, right. wow. It's that early exposure to technologies, which right. is gonna help you guys do your job too. There's enough knowledge to go around that we're all learning all the time. Absolutely. Right? So. so when we talk about knowledge and utilities, I mean, is this place just for like big wastewater or water treatment plants, or are you also working with smaller systems? Great question. I have, uh, when you think about everybody's passion, um, workforce is mine, but a big focus on small uh, rural utilities. Uh, such a, a, it's difficult to get the large engineering firms excited about that because there's not a lot of money in those smalls. I call them smalls. Um, but what do you define as smalls? What, what, small, like the guy that's running the plant is mowing guy, the grass and like 50 changing, putting one out operator, Christmas lights. One operator, hundreds of thousands. And, of and the dog catcher. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. it's a... Okay. Um, and we have plenty of those in Georgia. But what on the technology side can we tweak to work for them so it's inexpensive, it's easy? Think the Amazon of um, you know, treatment and innovation that we can help push people through the goodness of their heart uh, to develop products for, for smalls, I think is, is a key part of where I would like to see this organization go. That's cool, because that's small. I, one person operator mowing the grass. And yeah, I mean, it's plants, tough. Those plants do exist. Those and we're like, why, are, why yeah. can't you come to Demo Day and see these yeah. products? Well, who's going to mow the grass that day? Right, I mean, right. it's, it's tough. It's really right. tough. I can't just turn the light off and come over. I'm the only one there, right? Yeah. yeah. But we have, we're partnering with the Rural Water Association, 
partnering with GAWP, Georgia Association of Water Professionals. So really working with the people that go from smalls all the way to the large um, in the region, but beyond the region too. So one of our founding partners is JEA. They were here last week. They continue to engage. They've got a couple demos ongoing that we've yeah. placed with them. Um, so our reach is going beyond that. We continue to hold sort of thought leadership um, events and bring people in from around the country. I had a, I'm not sure if you were here during this event, but I had a three-day event um, the 1st of February with 35 utility female CEOs um, and consulting CEOs. So they were, they were all C-suite. Um, there were more utility people than private sector people huh. here for three days. They took three days out of their time. All from utilities and from mm -hmm. industry? Yep. It was wow. a, a great event and, um, you know, some, some really <clears throat> good discussions about how we're going to bring up, uh, how we can address diversity and inclusion, um, those kinds of issues. But also, who are we? Because a lot of us at this point, this has been our career. You can you share some of the ideas that came out of that, that inclusion yeah. of diversity and, um, and inclusion? Some of the uh, things, some of the tactics and strategies that you guys talked about? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, a, it's more of a responsibility on us to not just mentor, but be allies for yep. um, women and uh, people of color coming up in our, in our industry. Um, and then reaching out and just creating that network to support them. Everything from, uh, um, you know, a WhatsApp group chat where if we're at a conference and you see something and you see somebody in trouble, you can go and help them deal with these kinds of situations. So it was, it was just a really uplifting, positive event. That's cool. I mean, that's yeah. really cool. And, I, and I, we've noticed, too, in our industry, right, the demographic of engineering grads is changing. Yes. There's more women. I think I read somewhere there's more women engineers graduating now than men. And the demographics are changing. So obviously over time it's going to evolve into what it needs to. But it's, it's We hope. I think there's a challenge, though. I think, um, I think the pandemic was harder on women, and a lot of women are walking away from the career. Or that, saying, but, yeah. I don't want to be a manager. I don't want to be CEO anymore. You know, I'm happy just putting on workshops every now and then kind of a thing. So I think as an industry, we're seeing that. Tech industry is being really hit hard by that, but it's, it's going the over pandemic the pandemic was industry. one of the yeah. drivers of the, yeah. the reality of that. Yeah. What led to this women's thing that I put together was really um, you saw all of the, associate, the national associations, all of which I held one of the positions. When we left, we were all replaced with, with white men. Huh. Um, so that was a trend where we said, wait a minute, what, do, what did we do wrong to not give our boards Opportunities opportunity and, to yeah. look at different options? Yeah. Wow, that's a heavy topic. It's so, heavy. So you guys covered it. It's heavy. You guys covered it in a... In three days, and we're getting back leisure. together. So yeah. that's, that's really cool. So what, you're two years into this five-year vision or a strategic plan, what are we, whatever you that want to call it. That was for the... Um, yeah, for the applied, for the research piece. Research yeah. piece, and you're... This, this tower's been in service. We've been here a year or whatever. What, what's been your biggest challenge, if, I could have, if there has been one big uh, challenge? I think the, the biggest challenge is that everybody's really excited about what we're trying to do, but everybody's really busy, right? So, um, you know, Chris got a great team here. They're all really busy. So mm -hmm. when we try to coordinate events and things like that, sometimes it's hard to actually get people in Engagement the Engagement because yeah, of yeah. Uh, multitasking, everyone's busy. Yeah. But I think as we, as we bring in things like the trailer and more companies demonstrating and have more lunch and learns and things like that, it's just a, how do we design a system to support the industry to work together? So we're working through some of that. And from being a, a Georgia-centric, you bring it in from around the country, and we, you talked about franchising, it kind of we went through that, yeah. bit, but in an international beacon, how, what do you see as the roadmap to get to, to that down I, the road? I, again, I think, I think we're doing it. So um, uh, I mentioned the Netherlands. Yep. Uh, we've had uh, multiple discussions with um, Denmark, um, having conversations with Spain. Uh, Australia is obviously a, a good partner for us. Yeah. Um, I have a long history with Australia, as well as Singapore. Uh, so it's the, the cool thing about Atlanta is that it's one stop from anywhere. Well, so, the airport, you could get, I mean, you, exactly. you could get a 
one way flight. Not so great like, getting from the airport, but it's one yeah. stop and we can do it. Non-stop from yeah. anywhere almost to here. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's a great selling point, and it's a, a great location if we can continue to host conferences and, and different events like that and just get the word out. I think it's, it's going to happen. And, what, and if you have world-class kind of laboratory exactly. results and, and innovation ideas that germinate out of here, right, it just builds the brand. Yeah, right? and it so wasn't until cool. just a couple years ago that we actually, we, my team, started traveling again internationally. So we'll get that word out. So what do you see next from the next... You've mentioned a couple times building B. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Continue to drive people to want to be here because the more organizations we have on the campus, the more lively and interactive it's going to be. So where's building B at in the planning stages now? So room to expand, right? You've got room to grow? Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Oh, we've got, and we have out parcel locations too. So we've been talking to a few manufacturers about moving. Again, all water related. um, But they're going to be part of the workforce pipeline, part of the R&D work as well. Um, So just continue those conversations and get them on the campus. Um, And then a really big focus this year on getting my um, pilot scale treatment systems outside. So a DPR one where we can brew our own beer um, using the water from F. Wayne Hill, uh, as well as water treatment. Are you participating in that one? Yeah. Every every chance I can. (laughs) (laughs) Use your taste test. Of course. Yeah, so uh, the cool thing about being a nonprofit is that companies want to donate yeah. product. So we can glob together pieces and make a treatment train. We can make that work and then use it as a basis for some applied research. So making those things happen is, is a big focus for the next year. And I know that we're, and Dave, you've, you know, he's our wet weather practice lead. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to challenge him. What's the next laboratory idea that we want to try to pilot? Right, yeah. whether it's high rate disinfection or what, what it might be. Yeah, and, I mean uh, that's that's the trick, right? To figure out where things are going and what's the next pollutant. How not, we, not today, next, you know, in the future. Right, what's going to happen? Future. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, Chris, what else do you? Uh, well, <clears throat> you know, the whole demonstration component, you know, right outside the office here, yeah, uh, is just immensely appealing. And we're excited to be a partner for you guys and are looking forward to getting you know, that action going down there because, yeah. uh, you know, we've been anxious to see it get up and running. And um, yeah, we could use some engineering support. And you, you could use some engineering support. We have some <laughs> engineers here. And, and he uh, wants more engineers, too. So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, yeah. you know, there's a there's a pretty good school downtown, yeah. you know, that uh, that we like to recruit from and, and others, obviously, in the area and and in the region, so uh, just just building our team uh, with a water tower centric uh, conversation is it's been it's been phenomenal for us to grow our team here. You know we've we've been up and running here. We're we're almost at five years and close to twenty five people uh, in our Metro Atlanta operation. So uh, Waitrim's growing very rapidly, and our team here in Georgia is growing very rapidly. And you know the water tower is in that conversation with with every candidate. You know, so that. that's awesome. Um, it's yeah. got to be a helpful recruiting tool. And, you know, it's was it the Hamilton when you say, I want to be in the room where it happens. Yeah. Even if we're not at the point of a test or an innovative uh, thought leadership session, yeah. we're there. We're here touching it. Sure. We, we're connected to it. So and we could offer what you know what you guys have come up with. Yeah, we were there. We saw it. This is this is what the real results are. We didn't have to be at the point of everything, but we need to be involved with everything, I guess, yeah. is what my challenge to these guys have been, you know. We're in a place like this. Let's not waste it, right? Yep. And it sounds like you think sometimes we're not giving enough. <laughs> but uh, no, it's okay. Cause it that, that's is, other firms, not yeah, us. That's, not that's us. right. That's, not that's us. right. Well, the pandemic hit everybody, right? There was a little bit of that going on, too. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, so what other kinds of thoughts or, or words of wisdom would you give some some others that would want to start up something like this? Or do you want oh, this to be? Oh, no. <laughs> you, want this to be, you want this to be the place. Yeah, I want this yeah, to be the place. Yeah. It's... um. It's tough. You know, you think about um, just having this vision and this idea and then selling it to companies. Sight unseen, don't really know what you're buying into, yet huge, yet a supporter, you know, early. That's, um, you know, so was so incredible. The earliest. Yeah. It's just, I mean, we wouldn't make it without that. So now as we start to make things actually happen, I, I hope that you're as happy as as we are, so it's, yeah, it's pretty I, I, awesome. There's obviously a pace to when how things are going to move, right? And you can't control everything. You can have a vision, but 
there's some factors that you just kind of got to ebb and flow with. But um, what what would define success for you, say, in the next five years? You know, what give us some ideas about what you're really what really gets you excited that you you hope to see here at the water tower? Yeah, um, you know, from my perspective, what gets me excited is people working on stuff, right? Um, classes going on. We've got Trio out there right now doing some cla- doing a week long class. Um, we've got a, a big event this weekend, and we'll have another couple hundred people on the campus. Um, having active research in the lab is going to be awesome. This this summer, we'll probably have eight people in the lab, which is amazing. So it's like we've gone from Chris going from instrument to instrument to a team, a team a of team. people really yeah. working on applied Multiply research projects. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for me, it's it's activity in in each of the four pillars at the same time. And you're, becoming and, a, and you're becoming a pipeline for yeah. this young talent that's getting yeah. attracted to the industry. Yeah, we have people calling all the time. We have we have somebody who's interested in an internship. Do you have somebody? So making those connections this summer will be important. We hope you'll be a part of that. Yeah. Do you um, see Do you see Gen Z? I guess I'm so old now that so that's the young late? one. It's okay to be old. Uh, being more interested in concepts like one water and sustainability in the environment and general stewardship. I think it's, at least in my observation, my involvement, Absolutely. I see more energy than I've seen in young talent in a long time. Absolutely. Around causes like that. Do it's, you, it's a cause. It, they're, yeah. they're more cause-driven than I think we ever were. Um, so, yeah, it's that uh, environmental bent, but also how can I contribute back? How can I, you know, I don't necessarily need to do this, but how, how can I make an impact? Which is amazing. That's fantastic. That's exactly. I what. think it's really cool. I mean, yeah, Chris and I became cool. engineers because we needed money. Yeah. These kids want to change the world. Exactly. And everyone complains about the younger generations. I think they're the stewards of the but future. They still don't know about water shops. They still don't know, know. we actually it's do amazing. this for a living. They amazing. think that they're you know people who focus on whales and plastic bottles, and that's it. There's so much more. <laughs> My best friend was a CEO of a multi-billion-dollar company, and he didn't understand the cycle of water. He was asking me what happens after the shower to the. What should he tell yeah. his kids to? And, and I mean, I don't want to get into the details of this. Is you ran a multi-billion-dollar company, you don't know that basic kind of cycle, and it isn't out front and center to it's everyone. Not. You're seeing the kids don't understand it. It's. It's. I think. Turn on the faucet. There it comes. It's, it's always been there. It's always been there. It's always been. You know, it's never been the challenge. We are anymore. very blessed. Well, and it comes down to the funding, right, yeah. and, and, and the aging infrastructure issues and the reality that, you know, our society doesn't have a value for the mm-hmm. cost of water. And, you know, they'll buy the $8 lattes, but they won't pay an extra 20 cents we've a month. Been, we've been struggling with that for decades. Yeah. 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 And, and it's on just the public perception of It's water. so relevant yeah. right now. So the water tower yeah. brings yeah. the opportunity to, to close the gap on the time for innovation and technology to become commercially viable and... You know, that's why we're here is we want to be a part of that, yeah. that next big thrust and opportunity uh, to see the advances in our sector, you know, and help our clients ultimately figure out how to do things for less. So it's been really cool. I, believe it or not, we're running out of time. And I want to go around, Dave, some final thoughts. And Yeah, for me, like just walking onto the campus, I mean, I was picturing what the water tower is to civil environmental engineering industry as, you know, like in the technology industry, right? Folks go into Seattle to work at a big, exciting place that has research and there's there's people there and there's a, an energy that you can feel and you're, you're rubbing elbows and you're learning you're the cutting edge of, of what we do. And to be a part of a campus like this, you know, especially as somebody coming out of school, I mean, what, what a great place, like, a, you know, Disneyland for engineers, yeah. but um, just a lot of excitement here. Just glad that we're a part of it. And Looking, looking to collaborating with you guys more in the future. Absolutely. And this guy's a Michigan grad, so and he's excited. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Go ahead. I just, Melissa, yeah. thank you for your time today and our friendship that we've developed uh, and the working relationship. And, um, you know, we're here for the long run. And um, if you need something from us, just let us know. You know, we, uh, we're very committed to your vision and the county's vision for this whole facility and, you know, in hopes of seeing it grow to be this international, you know, innovation technology hub, global, you know, just we're here to, we're here to support you. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I would say before we let you take it home, this has been a great experience for me too, to see what's going on here. I mean, I had in my idea what it was. It's fantastic. I started at Waytrim when we were basically a Michigan firm. Mm-hmm. 
and I've watched us go into, and I've been at the point of many of it, uh, new cities, strategically with purpose and wanting to make a difference, right? And so Atlanta, like he says, is five years into it now. Um, we're really thrilled to be here, and we're really happy that we're able to combine what we want to be in the industry with something that you're you're developing here in the water tower and how that all fits together for us. It's been really cool. So thanks for having us today. You've been a great guest. And why don't you talk to our audience here about any last words you would give to whoever you want to talk to out there. We actually got uh, people in Kosovo to watch our oh, podcast now. Fantastic. So, fantastic. Melissa, um, take us home. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here. It's so um, excited about our partnership and what we're going to do in year two. Um, so much to do. If you haven't been to the Water Tower, come on out and visit us. Uh, reach out. Find out how you can get in involved. Um, we'd love to see you here, too. With that, let's uh, bring a close to episode number eight. Thanks again, Melissa, and we hope to have more discussions with you in the future. Absolutely. Thanks. Been a great guest. Thank Thanks. you.